too easy fishing and it's a great day. Why? Several reasons. One, and most importantly, I'm going fishing and I'm attempting for the second time this week to get to uh, the beach at Hayden Island. Now, I had hospital appointments yesterday morning and I thought I'd be able to get out in the afternoon, uh, but I felt so rough after the hospital and it started pouring with rain. I cancelled and hoped for better today. And I've been watching the forecast. There's uh, a clear spell in the weather for a few hours. Um, so, I'm in my rusty, trusty micro and I'm heading um, to the coast. And another reason to be happy is um, I've got past the M25 without any great um, aggravation, even though they were starting to put roadworks up and narrow the road. So, all in all, I'm feeling good, and I'm hopeful I will be able to catch some fish on uh, the beach and get everybody to look at it. And today's thing is purely an absolute for beginners. So I'm going to cut off here and concentrate on my driving and uh, I'll speak to you all from the beach right for now. So here we are on the beach at Hailing Island. It's not raining, plus point. There's a moderate westerly wind blowing. It's made me come up towards the western end um, to I think you call it the Pleasure Beach. And the Pleasure Beach, the reason I come up here because it's not being pounded. The other end of the bay is being pounded with quite a heavy surf. So I thought I'd come up here and give it a go. Anyway, now this is aimed at complete beginners. If you're an expert, look away. But on the other hand, you might uh, learn something. So uh, just gonna run through all the gear I've got with me. So here we are, we're all ready to go now. What am I fishing with today? Well, one of them is the rod you've seen me uh, test casting on the local playing field, this one. Just a cheap uh, 19 pound rod with a 27 pound reel on it. I've got a 65 pound bright green leader to 15 pound mainline on it. I have a two hook flapper. So I always recommend beginners start off with a ready made rig like this. It's called a two hook flapper. And uh, if I pick this rod up, this is what they look like. You have a quick breakaway fast link to a swivel at the top of the trace, two hooks that are able to flap around and a lead weight on the bottom. Today, I'm gonna to be fishing one rod closer in and one rod further out. This close in rod, I'm going to fish with a rolling lead. So see if there's any flat fish or anything else like that around. The second rod, is rigged identically, but this is a rod that I've only taken out of its bag. I've not even had a cast with it or play with it yet. And uh, this is another dirt cheap, an NGT, what they call an ocean cast. It's 14 feet. Cost 27 pound, or was it 27.50? Um, I wanted to use this basic cheap gear to show beginners that you don't need to own a Ziplex, you don't need to own a Century or whatever. And if you're on a tight budget, this is the sort of gear you can get. The real incidentally is a 20 year old or 19 year old, whatever it is, old Daiwa and Opus, which I think they still make in one version or another. 
gain 15 pound mono, 60 pound shock leader, and a two hook flapper. So that's the uh, basic setup. Everything else is exactly as I described uh, in the uh, what you need to get started sea fishing video. I have my chopping board, a little cheap plastic disposable thing. I have a very sharp knife here. It's rusty and old. But it's got an edge on it like a razor. Uh, I keep mine sharp with, uh, um, it's called Blade Tech. And uh, it's a very simple thing, but it gets, it gets the uh, knife edge really sharp. It comes with a little pouch to keep that, so I don't want to lose it. I've had it a while now. It's only, I think it was about 15 quid, so it wasn't cheap, so I like to keep hold of it. I have a finger stall or a guard. And for bait, now, one of the biggest expenses with sea fishing is bait. Lugworm and ragworm can cost, ragworm I think in the local shop was 16 pounds for a pound, and lugworm is about the same for a hundred. Depends on the part of the country you're in and the time of year and the suppliers rated to the cost. So today I've got some squid that are thawing out and I shall cut them up into very small pieces. I have a few monstrous ragworm. They didn't have any small ones. I would have preferred small ones. Now look at this. Now we are talking a proper worm here. That's, you know, I could get about three baits out of one of them. You could fish them whole for big fish, but I will be cutting them up into, uh, I mean, look at this. That's got to be a foot long. So not what I wanted. I wanted smaller rag. But that's what all I could get. Other than that, I bought a, what is known as a wrap of frozen black lug. Now there's two kinds of lug worm, blow lug and black lug. Black lug seems to be far superior in one aspect. You can freeze it and it comes out like sticky, there we go, there's the maker's thing. The guy collects them. Black bait box, black lug. Keep hold of my rubbish. And they come in wrapped in tubes in a lot of newspaper. And when you pull them out, they look like, well this one needs washing. It's a bit sandy, so it hasn't been washed. And it's basically a dead lug that's been frozen. And they go like, sticks of licorice it's the best way to describe them and fish love them but they're not cheap so and I shall, won't be taking these home once they've thawed that's it they're done so I'm now going to put this down I'm going to go down on the beach and have a quick cast with a new rod to see how I get on with it so I'll get back to you in a bit so here we go first cast with a new rod
Well, that was impressive for a 27 pound rod. That must have gone a, a good 120 yards on the first chuck. And that was just a little off the ground thing. Wow. Impressed for the money. I'll wind that in, which is going to take a while, and then I'll try uh, an inside of the right match. And, uh, yeah, that will wait. Oh, God. Now I'll match it. Five minutes winding in later. That is, that's a seriously good casting rod, good enough for anybody. To see how long it takes to wind in. It will be a while. The reason I'm not rushing fishing, I'm watching the sun over the Isle of Wight going down. Tired from all this winding. I'll find it up to the There you go. Not bad. I'm only going to bait up one rod to start off with. And I'm going to bait it up with two, with a bit of small piece of squid. So I'll take one of these uh, baby squid out, put it on my cutting board, good sharp knife, and uh, you can get a lot of baits out of one of these little squid. You can get the head section there, which is about an inch and a bit long. And then you can uh, slide your knife down the mantle, open it up, and you've got a nice triangle of flesh there, if you wish. You can scrape the skin off. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I will today, just to show everybody so that's what you're left with and I'll just cut them up into very small pieces 
And to one of those squid, I'm going to get a good, uh, what are we talking here? One, two, three, four, five baits. And uh, I shall use a section of ragworm. Oh, no, I won't. I'll actually use a piece of black lug. One of these. And again, I shall cut that into small sections. So I'm using small hooks. Don't want big baits. And out of one big black lug, I can get four or five baits. So just bait up a rod. We're going to fish the close-in rod with a lighter lead on it. And uh, I'll set the tripod down to the uh, water's edge. So I'm a good 50 yards from the water's edge here. Now the hooks I'm using are just a size two. Bottom one. I'm going to bait with a small section of black lug and I'm going to uh, put it on knitting style so basically you just keep turning the hook in and out of the uh, bait slide it up the shank so it's above the hook I left with a bait like that and upon that I shall tip it with a tiny little piece of squid just to give it a bit of extra uh, scent and colour there we go that's the finished bait second one uh, I'll probably do the same again. Though, no, actually, I'll just do a bit of squid on the second one. I have some mackerel. Um, frozen ones. And... Uh, So we go on with that. Right, that's the second hook, just with a piece of squid, little tiny piece. Now, traditionally, sea anglers would load their big hooks with uh, multiple lugworm baits and they'd all be targeting cod. Now, I have to be honest, unless you're in an area of the country known for cod and this isn't one of them, you're wasting your time. So I prefer to use smaller hooks with smaller baits and go for other species. Now if a big fish comes along, I'll still get it out. The so hooks I've got, and although they're size two, they are very, very strong. So um, on that note, I'm gonna take the tripod down to the water's edge and see if I can catch some fish. Now because I'm using uh, just a light lead, it's uh, bouncing a bit. If you watch the rod tip, you'll see it bounce as the waves pull it, like that. But that's not a bite. 
Bikes tend to be much sharper, rattly affairs. Uh, I've had a couple of little nibbles and I've rebated and recast as the lot falls, and now I'm going to have a little nibble more too. Uh, I asked for a child's portion of chips, but they've given me, uh, uh, yes, a very generous portion. So, uh, tuck into these while I'm waiting for a bite. I mean, no. Well, I had a terrific slackline bite and uh, we have a doggy. Fortunately, he's uh, very firmly hooked in the chops. <laughs> and I'm certainly not putting my finger in his mouth. Oh, there we have first proper bite of the night and uh, the humble dogfish. But um, gratefully received all the same. Now, some people will eat these. It's a bit small, and I don't particularly like uh, rock salmon. I'll just go and return.